I started making films for the BBC. Um, and I, from a generation that didn't have, there were no video monitors when I started. And this was the beginning of the 80s. Now everybody is a vicarious director because there are monitors all over the set. When I, was, uh, when I started to make films, you stood by the camera and trusted the operator. Uh, and you trusted your own instinct. And, and I learned quite early is what you see through the eye is what you're going to see on screen. Um, I mean, light does something, but the truth of a performance, it's either truthful to the eye or it's not truthful. It can be better, it can be transformed when you see it on, on screen and the light and some other the movement that can be a sort of alchemy. But essentially, if it's not doesn't feel alive to the eye, then it's not alive. It's Judy Dench, for instance, is like 300 miles away from the character. She's incredibly conscientious, incredibly well prepared, but when you're setting up a shot, she'll more often than not be telling an anecdote, often slightly dirty anecdote, <laughs> um, and, and, and gossiping. Um, and, and she has, you know, wonderful gossip. She loves gossip. And then, she, quite often, she does this. And on, on Iris, the editor used to kept. Um, he he hated cutting off the 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 bits before. You know, there's a clappable. Yes. Uh, and you start. The the director says turn over. So the camera and sound turn over. Uh, and so there's film running through the camera. Then the clapperboard comes down, uh, and the director says, action. So what happens is the editor cuts off the bits uh, after, you know, the, before, the, the, the direct, before the action starts. But he couldn't bear to cut it off, because what fascinated him, there was one particular scene where Judy was just, there was a sort of glimmer of thought, still in, of life still in the brain. And uh, John Bailey was reading to her a passage from Pride and Prejudice. And she appeared to be completely dead in the eyes and then said, I wrote. Um, and so there was some sort of connection. And it was, it was a bit absolutely fascinating because you were looking at somebody who, to all intents and purposes, was brain dead. Um, Judy, this, there's this take, and it was big, big close-up, so you couldn't lie. Judy was um, telling this story, uh, and as I said, turn over, finishing the story, the last word of, of the story, she then roared with laughter, uh, and, uh, and this, the, the clapperboard came down, and I said, action, and there are two frames after action where you could say, that's Judy Dench. And then she became, then she was Iris Murdoch in the later stages of, of Alzheimer's. It's just really freaky. How do you go about pitching? Because as many, many writers, writer directors that are abysmally afraid of that, does your theatrical background make it easy for you to say, okay, it's going to be a great movie? I and mean, how do you pitch Iris? Because she died. Um, well, Judy Dench, you say. I've got Judy Dench. <laughs> uh, okay. But um, with, with considerable difficulty, because of course the reason that Columbia Pictures didn't make the film was precisely because, as one script reader said in the notes, you know, I used to get pages and pages of notes from it, when it was at Columbia, said uh, the, the character John Bailey, the, the Jim Broadbent Bent character, is not rootable. Rootability is why films get made. Rootability, meaning can you root for this character? Is the character sympathetic? And they thought an English literary critic was, um, by definition, an unsympathetic character. Plus the fact, as Harvey Weinstein, who eventually distributed it in the States, said to me, uh, he said, who wants to see a film about an unknown British novelist dying of Alzheimer's? Fair enough, Harvey, in a sense. Very, very difficult to get a film made, and I feel so incredibly lucky to have, in the last few years, made three films. 
because it's so preposterously expensive, because even if you make it, it's only halfway there. You then have to get it distributed. And even if you get it distributed, you have to somehow hope that people turn up to the, to the party. But it does all start with the script. And, and the script is your prospectus. That's your selling document. Uh, and that's why, you know, it's, it's a good idea is, is only sort of the kernel of it. It's the, the, the actually working at achieving a really good script is, uh, that's the holy grail. And they're very hard to come by. It's, it, 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 that's why, in the end, more good films don't get made. I like, what I like about film is that you're working with three different groups of people in the preparation, the shooting, and the post-production. And, and they have very, very sort of distinct, distinctly different characters to them. And the process is, is very, very different. The rhythms are, are very different. Um, and, and it's sort of contemplation, action, reflection. Uh, Richard, for uh, an enlightening lecture. Thank you very much indeed.